Hey, Rick Usabell again from Cabaret Design Group, answering the question, how do you redesign a commercial bar? What are the criteria for redesigning an existing bar? Discover the design ideas and tips to evaluate and improve an existing commercial bar design. Are you interested in redesigning your commercial bar? Today we're going to discuss how to approach a total bar redesign. In front of you is a plan of a bar we just redesigned. This was the before or existing condition as it were before we commenced redesigning it. The bar is located in a very large bowling alley and was really two bars in one, consisting of a bartender station for walk-up business, designated here as a walk-up bar, to service the bowlers, as shown in this photo, and integrated into a 40-seat sports bar, shown here. This was a unique project for us because total redesigns are rare. Most of our projects are new construction, which usually provides some flexibility. However, this project had many constraints. Number one, to fit the bar within the existing space, within the context of all existing plumbing and electrical utilities. Number two, ensure efficiency within the new bartending stations. And number three, make the new bar appear as if it were intended for the space. The bar was very large, nearly 37 feet long, which is 11.28 meters as shown here. There were a total of four bartending stations and the equipment existing at the beginning of this project was clearly focused on draft beer sales. The existing equipment consisted of three direct draw draft beer coolers designated on the plan as DD, shown here, here, and one eight faucet draft beer tower for a glycol draft beer system designated as LD, shown here. As with most bowling alleys, the preferred beverage is beer. The primary goal was to reconfigure the bar so it would become more user-friendly, more appealing, and the second goal was to expand the glycol draft beer system from a centrally located island back bar in this vicinity. The walk-in cooler and power pack for the glycol system is shown over here. Lastly, this particular item shown over here is a pass-through cooler for bottled beer designated as PTC. From an aesthetic perspective, the first design deficiency I recognized are these two large circular lobes, one at each end, here and here, each about 18 feet or 5.49 meters in diameter. While they were attractive, the bar was well built as seen in this photo. They were also imposing. What's the most popular seat, I thought to myself? The answer is nowhere. In other words, there was no easily identifiable seating opportunity for someone to feel isolated and cozy as the bar's massiveness made this difficult to quickly assess. The next thing that jumped out was the gross lack of underbar equipment. You'll notice in this plan, the only underbar equipment is right here. It gave me the feeling that the bar is going out of business. Lastly, there was no footrest as you'll notice in this photo. 
Given all this, who'd want to sit at this bar? The bar had no comforting attributes and it imparted the lack of a clear committed effort on behalf of its owner. This isn't to say the owner wasn't committed. Perhaps he didn't know any better. After all, the bar was attractive and clean. It just had the wrong approach. However, it had run its course and the time was clearly at hand to start anew. As I mentioned, from an aesthetic perspective, the bar didn't provide patrons with the opportunity of any easily identifiable favored places to sit. Bars designed with multiple angles provide individuals and groups with this advantage, so the new bar would incorporate this idea as a priority. Secondly, the depth in the center section of the bar appeared to be expandable, which would be necessary for the future island back bar. From an operational perspective, the new bar would need to be fixtured for making mixed drinks so the patrons could feel as though they were sitting at a real bar. In part two of this series, we'll discuss how to design a bar.